Now that experience with Bowling Park and with the partnership, Cozy or Comer Ziegler, uh, is a good example of the problem in education and why it's so difficult to sustain institutionalized successful programs. Uh, both of our programs were successful and we were successful in Bowling Park and yet when we ran out of money we couldn't continue. But there's another part of the Bowling Park story that really demonstrates the problem in education. Uh, you know, they went from being last in the district to first in the district. Yeah. The superintendent called the principal in, and the principal thought he was being called in to be rewarded and praised for the great job he did. And the superintendent said, you know your kids can't do that well. Accused them of cheating. They had to take this, uh, the test all over in the summertime or after they had finished and were all ready to, to go home. Uh, there was a big newspaper story about the scandal or possible scandal. They sent people down from city uh, hall or from downtown to monitor so that the local people didn't monitor. Uh, the children did as well or better the second time than they did the first. Uh, the people in the school, the church, everybody rallied behind those kids because everybody was upset uh, and made to feel bad and uh, they rallied behind the teachers, the children, and again, they did better than they did the first time. But there was the principal, or superintendent, uh, accusing the principal in the school of cheating. It meant he didn't believe that they were capable of doing that well. Mm. Uh, now, whether it was bias or what, we don't, poor kids against poor kids, black kids, we don't know. But he had a successful program that he should have been exploring and he should have been making the most of. Instead, he accused them without any exploration of cheating. Now, when he found out that they weren't cheating, he should have explored to find out what they were doing, to see what he, what he needed to do to improve his entire system. Instead of that, what he did was to let a number of teachers leave. Um, he pulled the principal out and he claimed that he was going to have him uh, help others learn how to do what he was doing, except that he gave him no support and uh, it was impossible. He couldn't do it, he, nor did he explore or try to learn or understand the process, understand what had been done to make that possible. No effort whatsoever, which makes you think that he really wasn't interested in finding out uh, how, how to do it. And so uh, the program fell apart, and they went right back down to where they were in the beginning. Now, just by chance, um, the summer after, I was in the airport, and I met this uh, young black woman. Uh, she was the science teacher in the school. Uh, very bright, very interested, very very committed to helping poor black children do well in school. And she was on her way to take a job with a uh, chemical company because she couldn't tolerate what had happened. They had gone from the very top back down to the bottom, uh, not because the children weren't able, not because the staff wasn't making every effort, but because the bureaucracy or maybe a biased individual, I don't know, uh, did not make the most of those findings. And that's why you can't build on anything. There are too many people, little people. There are too many uh, little behaviors. Uh, there's no mechanism for learning and building on and growing what is successful. There's no funding for uh, supporting what is successful. And so things come, they go, they disappear. Uh, people come, go, disappear, uh, and we continue to have 
uh, a poor educational system when it is very possible with very little change uh, to have a very good system.